What's happening my fellow ghouls and ghoulettes? Welcome to a brand new episode of Chris's Custom Collectibles and today we are going to be finally, finally, pimping out the Legion Safety Workright coveralls. We're going to be converting these from some nice clean replica Michael Myers coveralls seen in Halloween 2018, kills and eventually ends. We're going to be converting these into the kills look. The second film in the David Gordon Green trilogy. So I know for the longest time I said I was going to be doing this video, it even honed back to last year just after Halloween Kills came out. And then kind of time went on and Halloween died down. I figured let's do this when Halloween ends is gearing up to come out. Plus also I wanted to get my methods down pat in terms of replicating the burns on the left side of the coveralls. Now I haven't actually washed these coveralls. I've worn them twice, three times maybe, just for test fittings and just to see how they look and just for photos here and there. But the first step is we have to wash this thing. We've got to give this a couple of washes just to break down the barrier and the protective coating of the fresh new fabric. So with that being said, let's get to it. Okay, so after two washes, two tumble dries, and sitting in the sun for half a day, I'm pretty happy with how these have faded. They've faded beautifully. Now, keep in mind, when it came to washing these twice, I didn't add anything else. Now, you can use bicarb soda, white vinegar, even washing detergent, like dishwashing detergent, to uh, lighten the fabric. I just feel that this is the perfect medium in terms of a starting point. They look nice, faded, and worn. So the next step is we're actually gonna fray some of these edges with a low grit sandpaper before we move on to grabbing some black artist oils and going into all the seams and really soiling and dirtying up these coveralls like they were used by a mechanic in the film. So essentially we have to H40 these and then go ahead and do the kills treatment to them. So what I have here is a 40 grit sandpaper and again this is really just going to rough up some of the edges just to give them a bit of wear and tear also on the cuffs of the pants and also the sleeves themselves, because you got to think about it, these are high traffic areas, there is going to be some fraying. Keep in mind, after we do the step with uh, staining and soiling everything with the artist oils, I'm going to go back in with this same grit sandpaper and kind of re-scuff some certain areas and bringing out the, the, the fadeness and the whiteness of the fabric now. And as you can see, by doing this, it, it fades the fabric even more and highlights it, which is really cool. Okay, so I've got my black artist oil and I just prefer using artist oils. I just like the way they, they hit certain surfaces and how you can control them. Keep in mind, it does take a little bit longer for these uh, oils to dry, but because we're going on a very porous, dry surface, it would absorb the oil from the oil color pretty quick. And if you leave them in the sun for about half a day, it'll dry pretty quick. But actually today, I think give it a couple of hours or so, and then we can move on to the next step, which is actually re-sanding some areas. So again, this is pure prep. It's your own preference in terms of how stained you want the coveralls to be. Obviously, I'm going for the H40 look before moving on to the bullet holes and then the burn on the uh, left side of the shoulder here. So I'm just using a pretty short looking chip brush. It's actually a solid looking chip brush and just getting in all those details and keeping in mind like these are mechanic coveralls. So the continuity is they'd be very greasy in certain areas and especially on the pockets here. I feel on the pockets here like where a mechanic would kind of wipe away grease and stuff like that on their pockets and, and around their legs there. So when it comes to actually applying it, I just always get like a scrap piece of paper and stuff like that and just get some sparingly on the brush and kind of wipe it into the brush itself so it's all covered and wipe away some excess. You don't want too much, otherwise it's gonna be far too intense. So let's see how this looks around the pocket. Yep, that looks pretty good to me. And the waistband here. Yep, digging that, really digging that.
I don't know why I find this stage so therapeutic. I love staining clothes like this. And the good thing is you can use this for a good couple of minutes before you kind of have to reload the oil color on your brush. It just lasts a very long time and goes a long way. Alrighty, I'm pretty happy with how this is all looking for now. So I'm gonna grab that 40 grit sandpaper again and just go over certain areas and re-scuff the coveralls. But after that, I'm gonna pop this on my mannequin because then we can move on to marking out where we want the bullet hits to go. Still contemplating whether to do the pitchfork markings in the back and just go all out and just have everything bloody like how he is at the end of kills. And then also prep the left side of the collar for the burns. This is very exciting, ghouls and ghoulettes. I love doing this. I'm very happy with how this is turning out. And these Legion Safety Work Right replica coveralls are absolutely beautiful and are a great placeholder if you're unable to get the actual Work Right coveralls. Alrighty, now that I've got the coveralls mounted on my mannequin, before we go on to marking and adding the bullet holes, what I'm gonna do is grab some more of that Black Artist Oil and I'm gonna essentially prep the groundwork for the initial burn. So essentially just laying down some soot and stuff like that, all on the collar area here and on the left side of the shoulder where the burns are eventually gonna sit. So this way it kind of creates a layering effect for the burns because the burns are gonna be quite glossy, but also to have something matte onto there. And also it acts as sort of a template, just so you know as a guide where to go in terms of all the burns. Plus it just helps to have a bit of extra charring going on here. Alrighty, let's mark out these gunshot wounds. From what I can see in reference, so we're gonna do one here. And we've got one up near the top button, so about there. And then one just a little bit further down there. And then we have two bullet hits that kind of coincide with the point here of the pocket. So we're gonna go about there. Keep in mind, I've also gone ahead and marked the side gash on the sleeve here. And then coming around here, I've got the pitchfork markings. And just for a bit of extra gore, I'm gonna do the exit wounds of the front gunshot wound because I'm pretty sure when Michael's getting beaten down by the mob, you see the exit wounds happen at the back of the coveralls with the squid packs. So we've got the pitchfork here, gunshot wounds here, gunshot wounds here, and as well as the side slash. Now to open these gunshot wounds up, I'm gonna re-grab that 40 grit sandpaper and essentially just sand the holes open. That way you've got a nice fraying, as you can see like there, like it has been shot at by a gun and it's just kind of frayed everywhere. Kind of work your way in like a crisscross faction and that will like slowly open the hole up and you can kind of gauge it and just make sure you get rid of all the excess schmutz there. Yes, Michael, it's time for some shitty commentary. I had to, ghouls and ghoulets, I had to. Now that I'm happy with all the bullet hole placements, it's time to move on to the fake blood. So I'm gonna grab some anodized coating red from Duplicolor and a Dulux Duramax red box. And by mixing these two together, I think is a good combo for quick, easy, cheap fake blood and stuff that lasts, especially when you're putting it on fabrics, uh, resins and stuff like that, it really does look like blood. And it's just a pretty much a 50-50 mix ratio. And this is completely subjective when it comes to the gore factor on your coveralls, ghouls and ghoulets. Like some people go all out and just cake on the blood. I kind of want this almost fresh. Like he's just been shot by that guy in the tiger onesie at the end of kills when the mob gets him and I'm just coating all around the areas and building it up. You have to let this stuff kind of dry and build it up because you are painting it onto a darker surface as opposed to say a white, say garment, and it would be a lot more easier. And I was really happy with how the pitchfork markings actually turned out. I was, I'm glad I went ahead with it. Again, I kind of want Super Saiyan Michael at the end of kills where he's just bullet, bullet riddled. He's got the, the, the pitchfork markings and also grabbing a brush and dipping it in that mixture and spraying blood on the coveralls. Granted, it's more of a subtle detail, but it just helps. It kind of brings everything together and just makes it a bit more grungier and really going to town goring up the right sleeve. Cause keep in mind that's his shotgun blast hand or sorry, the left sleeve for that matter. Okay, here's where we're at. I'm really happy with how the blood effects have turned out. So much so that when I was wearing my gloves, the paint actually thinned out the nitrile gloves and uh, sunk through onto my skin. But 
after building it up with a couple of layers, it really gets nice, grimy, and kind of gutsy, and really chunky. So I'm happy with this. There are some people that just completely coat this side with blood, and I just think this is a happy medium for me. Now, before we move on to the final step, which is the burns, I have something that is a last minute addition. So whilst the red was drying out in the sun, I grabbed this piece of foam core and got some liquid latex using the same brush that still had the spray paint soaked into the bristles. And I brushed on some liquid latex in three layers and left it in the sun. It dried pretty quick and it kind of made this kind of meaty looking kind of flesh tone. So what I'm gonna do is powder this, peel this off and contact adhere it to some fabric on the inside of the arm gash here so it kind of looks fleshy and that way when I wear it, you won't see my clean skin showing through. Instead, you'll see like an open kind of wound looking thing and bloody flesh. So that way it kind of just covers up my clean skin instead of going ahead and adding makeup on my arm. I've already got that covered there, so to speak. Okay, we're just gonna grab some talcum powder, just a little bit, just so it doesn't all stick together. Just lightly brush it over the entire piece. Now the fabric I'm gonna be using is the leftover wool from the Wonder Woman custom collectible uh, for the trimmings on her boots and gauntlets and stuff like that. Plus it's just nice and comfy and soft and it'll just feel nice when, uh, when you're wearing the actual coveralls. Okay, now that we've allowed it to dry, I'm just gonna grab that same anodized red that I was using on the bullet wounds and just coat the latex with it. And that way, it just looks like bloody flesh. And when it's showing through from under the coveralls through the actual slash mark, it'll just look like bloody flesh. It, it just, again, saves me putting makeup on my arm. And plus, we've got a bit of comfort with the wool underneath the actual piece. Now, while we're waiting for that patch to dry in the sun, let's mix up our burn mixtures. So I'm gonna grab some liquid latex, probably get a decent amount in there because we've got quite a bit to cover in terms of uh, coverage on the coveralls. We're then gonna grab an ivory black from Liquitex. Drop some of that in, there you go. Okay, that looks pretty good to me. It's just the slightest bit of an off black and that's what I want. It kind of is teetering towards, uh, heading towards a gray color and that's what I want. Uh, because if you know, you look at reference of the burns on the screen, use coveralls, the stunt coveralls, it's not a stark black, it's an off black, leaning towards gray. And if it gets to the point where I do the burns, I can just go back in with some artist oils, like a black artist oil and darken it some more. But for now, I'm pretty happy with that. So this is what we're gonna be using for the burns, ghouls and ghoulettes. And I'm making a very big mess. <laughs> okay, here we go. I've just got that same piece of foam core with the latex on there. I'm gonna grab a cut up scour sponge and just lightly dab some on the scour sponge and then we're gonna go to work. And I do love the effect it gives off already. You can kind of just get that squiggle, crispy burn pattern going on there, ghouls and ghoulettes, and it just works a treat, keeping it very sporadic. Now there are certain areas that you might wanna build up more because we do kind of have a pattern, a squiggly pattern going on down here, especially on the breast pocket. Really digging how this is looking. This is exactly what I wanted. The, the scour sponge isn't exactly reaching the depths like in here where the seam is. So you can always go in by hand and just redo that with a brush.
a year late, but better late than never. What is my hair? <laughs> <laughs> That'll do. So thanks very much for watching guys. Absolutely over the moon and stoked with how these coveralls turned out. Keeping in mind, before I started this, when I was looking at these before I gave them those two washes, I thought, I don't know how this is gonna turn out. But after you give it those two washes, two tumble dries, leave it in the sun, they look exactly like the work right coveralls, just as close and a great replica. And once all the weathering's done, it's a cracker. I'm absolutely stoked and I hope you guys got something out of this video. So with that being said, wherever you are in the world, please have yourselves an absolute cracker of a day. I hope you are. Hope you're happy. Be merry, be silly. And until next time, ghouls and ghouls, please always remember, cosplayers do it best.